This week we're talking meal prep. Best way to spend your evenings. Curled up in the kitchen with a glass of wine and a whole roast chicken. Well, not really, no. There are much better ways to spend your evenings. But if you're someone like me, who relies a lot on prepping meals so that they have lunch boxes ready for when they're working away, or, well, you just prep meals, you like lunch boxes, or if you make lunch boxes for your other half, significant other, or you just uh, maybe live on your own and don't necessarily need to eat a whole chicken, there are other ways to use it up throughout the week. We're going to talk about different ways so that you make sure your meal prep doesn't suck ass because a lot of people have shitty meal prep and dry overcooked chicken, rubbery meats, um, horrible soggy, weirdly smelling broccoli, that's quite common, uh, and all sorts of stuff, just not entertaining. Uh, and it's because people don't plan their meal prep properly, they just kind of chuck the basics in, they're afraid of other foods, um, and they don't really think outside the box of what you can do. They think grill, boil, that's it. Clean. I think meal prepping, it does have its roots in very much quote unquote clean eating, which is why you still see a lot of shitty meal prep, even from meal prep companies uh, that don't have particularly the nicest choice of foods. Um, I remember even some of the most, where am I shirt inside out? I'm not even going to edit that out. I'm just going to cut out the bit where I just got naked. Um, so it looks like magic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I must have been wearing that like this all day. I've gone into, I went to Morrison's with this shirt inside out. See, clearly I lack time to focus on my own food. So I need stuff like this. Anyway, I want to cover the sort of things and the sort of ways I would set up a meal prep um, when I'm doing mine. Uh, so, for obviously, first of all, the most important thing is the, the, the meat that you put in it, or the protein source that you put in it, whether you're a vegetarian or not, it has to be something you enjoy, it can't suck. So use my tips from, I think, the second week's video, to make sure your meat doesn't suck when you cook it, i.e. if it's salting. Uh, look at stuff I've done in the past on vegetarian and vegan foods, that's also good. Go to has to be enjoyable. Things like frozen fresh bird's eye bean mix is fantastic. Nothing wrong with frozen vegetables, um, especially for something like this, to make the base of your meal for the protein. The other thing is, so we, I've talked about this on social media a lot, people just go overboard on the protein. Um, if you're needing like one and a half grams per kilo of body weight, even for me, in a whole day, that's like 170 grams of protein. It's actually not that hard to get that over three meals. You don't need to eat the whole chicken. If I just take a quarter of it, that's more than enough for one sit-down meal, and I'm sure people have other things like protein shakes post-gym, and also, you know, this is supposed to be a convenient meal, and on-the-fly meal, so don't cry too much over it. Make it tasty, make it fit the macros as well as you can as to what you need. You've got breakfast and, and dinner to actually make up the difference if it's a little bit out of whack, but make it as, as balanced as possible. So the first thing you want is always your protein choice. I find chicken is way easier for the lunchbox than pretty much any other meat. I find beef tastes better hot and rare. I find lamb doesn't go, don't do well when it's cold, it tastes a bit funky, unless you're having like koftas or minced kebabs. Um, same goes for beef there. Uh, pork, bacon sandwich. Uh, pork is better hot and crispy. Chicken works well in salads, chicken works well in everything. Fish, I don't like it in meal prep either. Cold fish, not a fan of that either. So for me, almost always, I, rode, I railroad myself into having chicken. It's just really versatile. Doesn't mean I don't eat fish the rest of the week though. Meal prep for most people is normally just one meal of the day. So you can work around that. So first things first, get your head around that. It's just one meal. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Next, you've got to get carb choices. And you've got to think, am I going to be eating this hot or am I going to be eating this cold? Because that will make a big difference as to what you can prep. If you have the facilities to eat food hot, you can have a whole host of other foods. Like me, I can't stand things that are cold when they're meant to be hot. Just don't enjoy it. So don't give, or actually other than bolognese, which just is great regardless of whether it's hot or cold. But don't give me cold food. Give me hot food, or give me food that's meant to be cold, like a salad, you know, or that kind of thing. So yeah, next thing is your carb source. Again, stemming from the sort of clean eating meal prep thing, carbs can be anything. For me, it's got to be stuff that goes well, either cooled down or intentionally cold. If vegetable sources, I tend to again railroad myself in a meal prep box. I don't like broccoli cold, uh, unless it's raw. So I tend to put that aside and don't use that. Sometimes I will use broccoli if it's done in sort of a peanut satay sauce. That works fine for me cold, cuts up very small. Ways to make things tasty. 
Um, again, more vegetable source. So these are lower carb, obviously. These are not your main carb sources. Green beans go really well if you griddle them. Hot, hot griddle, nice burnt scorch marks over them. They taste good like that. Sugar snap peas or mange two peas. These are mange two. Great cold, great raw. No effort required for them. Things like peppers. The small peppers go really well if they're char grilled, charcoal, or just thrown onto the burners. So I will use a gas grill and I will literally burn these black, peel the skins off, delicious. Or something more enjoyable, these little padron peppers you see pop up around barbecue season are fantastic too. They're a little bit spicier, have a bit more of a bite, really good with a little bit of oil and salt. These things all go around to complement the main portion of food you're having. So a good roast chicken or a barbecue chicken or a grilled chicken or however you want it when it's seasoned up right can go really well with these fresh, crunchy, tasty vegetables. It works well cold. Then you've got things like the simple bulking out vegetables. So these would be things like your white cabbage shredded with some vinaigrettes or the carrots. Again, work well shredded. Where people start to go wrong on the, the um, more high carb, carb dense foods is not thinking about main portion of the meal, the protein, the sort of healthy micronutritional bulking foods. You tend to find that the most micronutritional rich foods are the ones with low calories, the peppers, the carrots, the beans, the peas, the, the, the broccoli. Don't carry a lot of carbohydrates in them. Don't carry a lot of calories in them. So you've got to push that number up somewhere else. Otherwise you've got a very low calorie meal. That's where we start to look at things like potato, sweet potato or white potato. If I'm eating this cold, the smaller new potatoes boiled up, although these are pretty big for new potatoes, uh, go really well. Again, cold or drizzled with some mustard or some oil or some vinaigrette with the vegetables that also go well cold. That would taste horrible um, if you put it with vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, for example. It just wouldn't work. Potato cold with a vinaigrette with broccoli and cauliflower? No, that wouldn't work. Or you've got breads. There's nothing wrong with breads, especially since you've already satisfied all your other requirements for the meal. Um, I quite like naan. I like to grill that make that hot. I quite like wraps. Wraps are really handy. Nothing wrong with sandwiches at all. So you can start putting your meal together around this. Um, I won't be using broad beans unless I'm putting them in to bulk out the carbs and to put the protein up a little bit if I'm kind of you know making my meal a bit more bulky. Um, and then you've got the additional things like the fats. So the fats inherently are going to come in the chicken are going to be quite low. If you use beef, they might be a bit higher. If you use other cuts of meat, they might be higher. If you used eggs as your main protein source, you'd have a good fat in there too. So I tend to do one thing if I'm doing grilled chicken and skewers is chicken and chorizo works very well. It's a very high fat, saturated fat food. You could, if you're making salads, chop up things like avocado to get some vegetable fats in there as well. There's a whole host of things to think about. So don't railroad yourself. Carbohydrate choices as well. What's wrong with having a main meal and a piece of fruit as a side dish? Whatever happens to people having desserts or just fruit at work? I very rarely anymore see people who take fruit to work with them or pack fruit in a lunchbox for themselves. For the kids, yep, all the time. But for yourself, very rarely see that for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Again, going a bit oriental. Rice noodles are fantastic and pretty much satisfy all the weird hippie requirements that people have these days to avoid everything other than white rice. They're good. Boil them up with spices and seasonings and you get a really tasty base to toss all of your food into. So I don't have a huge amount of stuff here, but I can make well, I can make an ass ton of different dishes with just this if I had some more seasonings for the chicken, but I'm just gonna use the one plain roast chicken and I'm gonna throw together two different meals that I might prep normally to eat. Get your potatoes boiling and blacken yourselves some of these little padron peppers so that you can get a nice bubbly skin on them. They're gonna go in with the potatoes and with some shredded chicken. Grab yourself your favourite seasoning. I'm using paprika, chilli and a little bit of sugar because I want the sweetness. And the carbs aren't too much of a problem for me. And brilliant uh, meal prep tip. So your salads don't go horrible and mushy. These little bottles that often have food colourings in them uh, are actually cheaper than buying fresh ones, new ones. Uh, and are really good for putting dressings in that you can shake to mix when you want. That's a free tip for you. I'm going to just put balsamic vinegar in with this and a tiny bit of oil because I'm going to have 
uh, a relatively dry tasting dish for this. I'm not going to smother them with mayo, I'm going to keep the calories a bit lower um, and avoid adding much more saturated fat into this. So, as those boil away, because they're going to make the main portion of the main part of the dish, I'm going to have it with a small amount of griddled green beans to add some texture and some crunch and um, that's essentially going to form the main part of the, the side of the dish to go along with the protein element. So I'm going to have potatoes, slightly hot spicy peppers, a dressing mixed in with cooked relatively al dente green beans. I'm going to mix those in uh, and they're going to form the biggest portion of the meal in terms of volume. So when we spoke in the first, uh, first week, first food cast, about the volume of the meals and the satiety and the palatability of them, that's going to ensure I've got a lot of food volume, it's going to taste great, it's going to be very palatable, and it's going to provide an average amount of calories. Most of the calories are going to come from the potato, which is not very high calorie anyway. Probably a good degree of calories will actually come from the oil and the vinegar, although not a huge amount in terms of grammage because of the calorie density of the oil. Plus I'm getting some good quality oil in that meal while still keeping the calories low. Um, and then obviously the carrots and the peppers, uh, and I'll actually I'll probably you know, grill up one of these as well to throw in there, so I've got a bit more colour in there. They're going to add a lot of micronutritional value and a lot of flavour. Did that all make sense? I hope so. If you watch week one it should do. You could bulk this out with anything. You could throw spring onions in for more density. Uh, you could chop up small amounts of avocado. Potatoes and gherkins go really well. Potatoes and cucumber goes really well. Depending on your calorie allowances, you could use full fat mayo or light mayo. If you want to get different oils in, you, know, you can use different dressings. Uh, it, you know, the choices are endless. And then I will accompany that with some shredded chicken or some chunk chicken, uh, which I'm also almost going to make the chicken into a bit of a, um, a, bit of a salad itself by mixing it, I should really be using tongs before I stick my fingers into hot coals because yes I'm using my, uh, my kitchen gas grill here um, and I'm going to mix the, salad, uh, the chicken with some other components as well to finish off that one first meal um, I would use them for my second meal more of a sort of Asian influenced chicken which means I'm going to be mixing the rice noodles um, with a couple of other ingredients which I'll cover in a sec so and through the magic of video editing, the potatoes are already done, chopped up with the uh, padron peppers in the meal prep box next to me. So I only have to worry about now getting a bit of heat onto the green beans that I'm going to sort of blacken and, and throw into there to form the rest of this salad. I'm also going to season it a little bit just to add some taste in and add my dressing for use at a later date. There we go. Messy job that. It's not. One more. So those are sizzling away nicely. This, this whole meal, although I skipped the small portion there, other than cooking the chicken, this has taken about five minutes. Can't say fairer than that for meal prep. You get home after work, or you get your Sunday night ready for the week's prep of food, throw the chicken in, get your chores done, come back out, saw all of this stuff out, no bother. Be done in a very short amount of time. Next up, I'm going to want to bring the main portion of my meal back over, which means just removing this from view for a moment. And now this is cooled long enough for me to just go straight in and take a good deal of breast meat off. And because used all the little tips and tricks that we talked about already, well they're all, just the one, I haven't talked about the cooking temperatures yet, I am going to eat that. Got some of my hair in my mouth then. <coughs> You've got one very good sized, very tender breast meat piece. 
So that could either go straight in there. Now that will stay succulent and that will stay quite tasty even though it's going to go cold. Or shred that up so you've got that with something else as a side. Now if you need, let's clean my hands, if you need to increase the fat content and you, want to, you don't mind using more animal sources, you've got great options. Shredded chicken with small chopped up bits of chorizo is fantastic. You can bulk it out with that. If you want to put the carbs up more, because honestly, that's enough protein, I think, for one person, for one meal, in most situations. It's certainly enough for me for one meal. I might add more carbs to that in way of these noodles. I might bulk this up more. I might just shred this, put that in there, put some chopped um, fruit in the other side of this. I just have these special little meal prep um, packages, which makes it easier for me. So, regardless of what I'm going to do with that, you can imagine I've done it anyway. I'm going to now take these, because they're charring nicely, using my improvised grill over the top. Don't need this anymore. There we go. And I still want these to be relatively reminiscent of beans, even though they're nicely black and to give a bit more taste. So just going to cut them into sort of rough chunks, like so. Those are going to go in there. Tasting good. And now, because I haven't seasoned the vegetables, it's going to rock salt on top, pepper quite liberally, and a little bit more of this seasoning, which I have already used. There. And where's my fork? I don't have a fork, so I'm going to use my hands. Now, it might look dull to some people, but that's a fuck ton better than a load of rice. Way more nutritious. Much better than broccoli and rice. That's going to be way more tasty. That will work good cold or it will work good hot. So that is one meal essentially prepped. A little bit dull, but done nice and quick. Um, that bothers me that I haven't done anything with the chicken. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of making me twitch, but I'm gonna leave it like that anyway. Yeah, one done. Right, next meal I might do would require a bit more shredding. And guess what? I get to get the skin from this one too. Although, the dog is looking quite sad. Good girl. Bad, bad habit, I know. In this instance, I am going to cook some broccoli, but I'm going to griddle it just to singe it, and then I'm going to Asian it up a little bit. So again, a nice amount. Get some more chicken from here. Could use any part of the chicken now if you know somebody who really wants to keep the breast meat for themselves. But I'm just going to take some of this and I'm going to really chop it up. Now I don't really need to be using one of these square dishes. Sorry, huh? I'm going to throw it into one of my little square prep lunch boxes. If I can remember how to get into it. There we go. Which I'm a I'm a slut for cool cool Tupperware. Comes with its own little seasoning pots and stuff. However, that's what I want from this. A bit more chicken. Could be weighing this, but I'm not. I'm going to use the already cooked rice noodles for my main carbohydrate source. So I'm going to use, well, I'm sure I'll just tip the whole bowl with that. I'm going to use pretty much one of those. I'm going to throw my chicken in. I'm going to 
really finely chop up some sugar snap peas. I say really finely, I'm not. I'm just going to hack them. I'm going to take good old broccoli that's nicely singed on the outside, if I can get to it before it falls down the grill. That needs a bit more. This one's for those of you that like the, uh, the feeling of being extra hippie by having slightly raw stuff. Really, this time I am doing this fine. Thinly shredded white cabbage. Use that on the shredder. Is probably just as easy. Just to toss in there with a small amount. The sweetest of the peppers. to endure for those of you who don't like it. I do love the smell of slightly griddle broccoli. Toss that through. And there we go. That again will make a pretty decent simple lunchbox. So another meal prepped. Heavy on the carbs this one, a lot heavier than the other one. But I shouldn't have the same thing every day anyway. Mix it up from meal to meal. Keeps it interesting, keeps it enjoyable. Right. I have a dog hiding under the table. Waiting for scraps of food to fall on the floor. There you go, dog. Excellent. So, meal prep considerations. What's your carb source going to be? What's your protein source going to be? Are you eating it hot or cold? How are you going to bulk the food out so it's palatable, it's filling, it's enjoyable? What are you going to put it with? Are you going to go potato? Are you going to go lots of veg? Are you going to have high carb, low carb? Are you going to have high fat? Are you going to have high fat from animal sources? Are you going to use a plant source fat? Are you going to do that from the dressings? Are you going to do it from what you add in? Chicken and shrimp so skewers, for example, are fantastic. If you buy chicken breasts and you chop them up, you've got some wood sticks. Chicken, chorizo, pepper. Chicken, chorizo, pepper. Fantastic. Put that with some of these potatoes. You've got a barbecue meal. 